Hello, and thank you for tuning in. My name is Dana McKellar and Taka, and I am here before you today to have an emergency conversation regarding the events that occurred on yesterday in Washington, D.C. And first and foremost, it is January 7th, 2021, and today happens to be the birthday of one of my favorite people, Shalina Clemens, who's a longtime business partner and sister. Happy birthday, Shalina. Let's get right into the pro-Trump mob that stormed the Capitol on yesterday. And I want to invite you into this space so that we can have an intellectual conversation, we can bounce ideas off of each other and forge a new way of thinking, develop more plans to keep our families safe and to keep ourselves sane. And before we go any further, I just want to say, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Because I never want to say anything that can be construed as offensive or off key. I ask that you come into this space with an open mind and let's get right into some historic context. Let's get right into some scientific context and let's get into some spiritual context as well. Let's go first to John the eighth chapter and the 44th verse. And it reads, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the following of his holy word. Maya Angelou said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. I don't feel that we should need to have a remedial course when it comes to understanding the events in America. But I do understand that sometimes people can be shocked. I have a difficult time understanding being shocked, but I am working with myself on understanding how we can be shocked when we have historic references on what is uh, right, what's wrong, what has happened in a way that has been in our benefit and what has happened in a way that has not been in our benefit. Sometimes when you have a gift to give someone, in your family, you come into the house and you'll drop a rose petal here, you'll drop a rose petal there, you'll drop a rose petal there, leading them to the room where you have this amazing surprise. Every time there is an assault on an innocent person in their home, like a Breonna Taylor, that's a rose petal. Philando Castile reaching for his license and his permit to carry a firearm that's a rose petal leading you up to a huge event like what happened on yesterday. Now, over 50 years ago, Malcolm X compared America to a powder keg. And let me just pull up that quote right now. It was in the ballot or the bullet speech from the late 1960s. When you got a racial powder keg sitting in your lap, you're in trouble, more trouble than if you had an atomic powder keg sitting in your lap. When a racial powder keg goes off, it doesn't care who knocks it out of the way. Understand this, it's dangerous. You're the one who has that power. That is, again, from the ballot or the bullet speech. And you can go to YouTube and you can listen to that speech. And before we go any further, I want to talk about how in the 60s, 
the 40s and the 50s that the mainstream media had our grandparents and great grandparents afraid to listen to Malcolm. They said, oh, he's radical. Oh, he's anti-American. And Malcolm evolved in his thinking and he even told us that when he came back from Mecca and he had prayed with blonde hair and blue eyed white men when he made his pilgrimage, he came back and said, well, not all white men are evil as he had previously said. So it's important that when we develop a new way of thinking that we reach back and that we address our old ways. Kibbles and bits. When you have a treat for your dog and you sprinkle a kibble over here and a kibble over there and a kibble over there, you're leading the dog to a new toy. Little kibbles and bits have been happening to us all throughout the year of 2020. We can go back in our lifetime to 1993 or 92 to Rodney King. We can go back to um, the gentleman from, what is the city in Texas, my home state. Larry is his first name, and he was dragged to death. Innocent man just walking down the street, special needs gentleman just trying to get home. And that's what we're all trying to do, is just get home to get our families, dinner together. Everyone wants the same thing, no matter what your race is. You want to have a successful life. But the assaults, the kibbles and bits just keep coming. Albert Einstein talked about how to analyze a problem. Einstein said that if you have a problem, you need to turn it upside down. You need to look at it in every single way possible before you make a final analysis. And then if you get some new information, you may have to throw out that analysis and move on to something else. But we have to look at these problems like a 10,000 piece puzzle and keep on working with the information and putting it together until we can get some kind of resolution. Now I know people have thought that we would never see war and tyranny on our home soil, but spiritually speaking, that does not even make any sense. The laws of the harvest tell us that we will reap what we sow, that if you plant corn, you cannot expect to get a bean. The man of lawlessness, Second Thessalonians. When I saw yesterday, I, I couldn't really stop working. Couldn't stop working, but every few minutes, I would jot down a note. The man of lawlessness. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, first verse through the seventh verse. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshiped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things and now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. How many lawless men were at the Capitol on yesterday? And I hear people making uh, comparisons saying that if those had been black people, this would have happened. If those had been black people, that would have happened. And they're correct. But I can tell you that I don't want to be equal to those men. I don't want to have the ability to go and perform all kinds of lawless acts and get away with it. As people of God, we're not supposed to even want that. Let's learn to decode information. 
we keep getting refresher courses every day with every headline. And I want us to grow and evolve and move away from being shocked. You can be angry, you can be appalled, but it just does something to me when I, when I see people say that they're shocked. We protest to defend ourselves, whether you protest with your pen, whether you go out to a march. I've even seen some lawless men go out and protest, well not protest, celebrate when their favorite hockey team wins, destroying cities, climbing phone poles, turning over cars. Don't be distracted, be vigilant. I have heard people say that this is Trump's America. Trump created all of this. And I respectfully and humbly disagree. America created the fertile soil for a Trump to exist. Trump did not create America. We need to start singing again. I can remember when we used to sing, We Shall Overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome one day. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome one day. You see, when we used to sing those songs, we knew that we had not arrived. We knew that we had not overcome, but something happened when we were able to move into gated communities and drive larger cars and have bigger bank books. And we actually thought that we had overcome. And these kibbles and bits, these rose petals that keep getting dropped in front of us reminds us, well, it reminds me anyway, that we haven't quite overcome yet. And so people were having difficulty focusing on their work yesterday. I hope you can do a better job of focusing on work today because they are lifting the moratorium on evictions. Over 14 million families are at risk of losing their homes. Please stay focused on work. Protect your family financially, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Be wise with your finances. Uh, my former president of Southwestern Christian College, Dr. Jack Evans, used to say that if you poured your pocketbook into your head, in other words, elevate your way of thinking, educate yourself, that you would get all of the other things that you wanted. And the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's remain focused. Don't spend your time risking losing your job that people barely have working from home. Don't spend your time on the internet, interacting and engaging and running your blood pressure up. And let's stay focused. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't want to overwhelm you. I made a huge outline with a lot of facts that I want to bring. And I didn't want to have to do this, but W.E.B. Du Bois said that if you're going to be a scholar in anything, that you have to address everything. And while I have addressed these issues in writing, I have reserved my YouTube channel for speaking on scientific topics for my hobbies and things that I enjoy doing, but I felt compelled. As I said, I was awakened from my sleep at 3 a.m. before I could even get down to my knees to say my prayers. The thoughts were coming and I will be coming back to you in 15 to 20 minute increments, bringing more historic references, bringing more spiritual references, and bringing more scientific references so that you can understand and decode what's happening. Thank you so much. And again, if you're just tuning in, my name is Dana McKellar and Taka, and I'm pleased to be here with you. May God bless you. And I'm praying for you.